on the phone. It is always a pleasure to welcome this guest back uh, to the program, um, and, but also with a certain amount of, of sadness. Um, I mean, I, I you know this is this is not uh, this is not goodbye. It's just see you later, maybe. But um, David Dayan from uh, Fire Dog Lake News. Uh, uh, David, about a, a week ago, maybe two weeks ago now, you announced that you were you were done blogging on December twenty first. Yes, uh, I I did not recognize at the time how closely that aligned with the end of the Mayan calendar, <laughs> but um, I, I, I it was not done in the expectation that there would be no news after the apocalypse. Right, right. There you go. Um, well, all right. I, I want to talk about those reasons why, but um, and and let me you know l- let me preface uh, the other question I have by first saying that you know I've been a huge fan of yours for at least just off the top of my head uh, maybe six or seven years uh, when you were writing. Uh, I think I first came across your writing at uh, Digby's blog. Uh, maybe before then. Um, I think uh, when you had dday.blogspot.com up, um, I, I was pulling your feed for the Air America website. You've always been um, right. one of the guys that I've really had uh, just been incredibly impressed with uh, in terms of your writing, the clarity, the work that you did, uh, your intelligence, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I want to get that out of the way before I ask you, um, a question that's completely unrelated to your decision to stop. <laughs> well, uh, I do appreciate that. And I, I appreciate the, the outpouring of support that I've, uh, gotten from people, not just in my comments and on Twitter, but email and, uh, uh, virtually all over the place. Uh, people have, uh, have expressed, uh, their gratitude and, 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 and always, always adding, you know, tell me where to find you next. And, and uh, so it's, it's really nice to see. And, you know, sometimes when you live in the, in the blogging bubble, you don't uh, even have a sense that anyone's paying attention to this stuff. Uh, so it was, it was nice uh, to, to get that recognition uh, from, from the people who read you every day. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it, it, can, it can feel like a, a, a thankless job, and I know that, but I, I got to tell you that um, uh, I am going to uh, feel your absence um, uh, in, in a way that uh, I don't even want to contemplate, frankly. Um, <laughs> uh, but, um, it's very nice of you, thank you. So, all right, with that said, I want to get to the reasons and, and just your, sort of your, some of your thoughts on having done this for so long and being such a big part of, of, of the net roots and, 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 and the reporting that you have been doing. Uh, but, you know, to have you here and not discuss this latest proposal would be like having uh, a famous chef in your kitchen who's, who's got the, the, the hat on and sitting there with a spatula and saying, ah, sorry, I don't have any ingredients for you. Um, well, that's that's a bad analogy, but whatever. The point being, the the, the point being, um, we have seen the first offer or the latest offer coming from the White House. It um, just break it down for us uh, briefly, and give me a sense of uh, of what your feelings about this offer are, and what we know about whether or not Boehner Boner is going to accept it. Yeah, I guess this is the third offer, right, uh, from the White House uh, responding to some counteroffers. Uh, and, and the ostensible goal here is to avert the fiscal cliff, uh, what is commonly called the fiscal cliff. Now, now, in the event that we did not avert that, that Congress just took no action, uh, between 500 and $600 billion of austerity would hit this year. Uh, under this deal, now wait a second. Well, uh, will you just break down uh, the austerity that you're talking sure. about—that five or six hundred billion dollars. Um, right. Just like, give me it comes a slight from a break. Variety in. of sources. Yes, it comes from a variety of sources. One is uh, the expiration of the Bush era tax cuts, uh, which uh, is probably uh, it's the, about half of that. Okay. Uh, you also have the sequester uh, on uh, both. Uh, discretionary and defense spending, that's about $100 billion for the next fiscal year. Uh, we're all, we're all, 
I'm always, when I'm talking about these numbers, I'm just talking about for 2013. Okay. Uh, you have the expiration of the payroll tax cut, which was a stimulus program that would cost, uh, that would, you know, be $125 billion in austerity over uh, 2013. And then you have a variety of other uh, uh, measures, uh, whether it's unemployment benefits uh, expiring, uh, the doc fix, which uh, uh, prevents a, a, a cut to the, the reimbursement rates in Medicare for doctors, uh, and, and several other things that if everything went over the cliff, it would be something around six hundred billion. Now we should say uh, also the implications of those different of those different figures are different. In other words, exactly. the, the multiplier exactly. for uh, the 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 three hundred billion dollars worth of tax cut austerity is um, not uh, is is not equivalent yeah. to the austerity impact of three hundred billion dollars. If there was such a thing of let's say unemployment insurance uh, ending right. or um, or payroll taxes uh, ending, because Absolutely. that money is spent more readily by the people who are the beneficiaries of those uh, stimulative um, uh, programs. Let's say. Right, and by and large, spending, you know, federal spending goes to vulnerable populations and people who, who need it and, and will spend the money. And, and so uh, spending usually has a higher multiplier than taxes. Uh, the payroll tax cut, which is fairly well targeted to middle class families, uh, it's really a wage subsidy, uh, is, is, is more, uh, has more of a stimulus impact than, than tax cuts for the rich. Uh, anyway, uh, so this latest offer, if you look at it relative to that, my back of the envelope calculation is that it would have about three hundred billion in austerity uh, in 2013. Uh, and what gets cut out is mostly those tax cut, the share of tax cuts uh, up to the first four hundred thousand dollars because uh, the, the the president changed his target. Uh, now the, the dividing line is not 250000 but in this latest offer, 400000 a year. Only the top marginal tax rate, rather than the top two marginal tax rates, would go up under this plan. If you look over the course of the whole plan, uh, in the sequester, there, there was about $984 billion in spending cuts, uh, and those were targeted to discretionary defense spending and holding uh, uh, Social insurance spending harmless. Uh, in this latest offer, there's 922 billion in uh, spending cuts, and it does not hold uh, uh, social insurance cuts harmless. In fact, there are 400 billion in unidentified Medicare or health program cuts. That could be Medicare, Medicaid, or, or various other things. I assume. Uh, and there is this change CPI, this change to the calculation of the cost of living adjustment, change to the inflation index, uh, that would impact Social Security benefits and make them grow s more slowly over time. It's, a, it's really a benefit cut. Slowly uh, over time well, relative to inflation. So uh, the, the well, reality well, is, well, yes, yeah. it's, a, it's a cut in it's practice. Absolutely. In terms of your, the purchasing power, it's cut. So there's almost no difference between going over the cliff, as it were, and taking the Obama deal in terms of spending, in terms of spending cuts, they are almost equal. And uh, you can argue that since they, they hit social insurance programs, which are targeted at the, 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 the poor and the elderly, uh, that they would have a, a more disparate impact than uh, just doing nothing and going over the cliff. So that's the context for, for when you're looking at this deal. Uh, there's basically no change on the spending side. It's arguably worse uh, because of the cuts to social insurance. Uh, the tax issue is uh, somewhat the same as if uh, the, you know, as I said, the $250,000 dividing line has changed. It's only the top marginal tax rate that would go up under the Obama plan. Uh, at four hundred thousand dollar above, and then there was all this unidentified other tax revenue increases that would get you to one point two trillion uh, in revenue increases under this deal, relative to just letting the top two tax rates expire, which would get you about eight hundred billion. So there's about a fifty percent increase in revenue from that, 
but the spending cuts are the same. Presumably, you, you take in more taxes so that you can finance uh, spending uh, by government. But what, what we're saying here is we're going to take in more taxes, and we're going to apply that to deficit reduction, and we're going to do the same amount of spending cuts that were envisioned previously uh, under the, the fiscal slope. Yeah. Very bad uh, recipe in terms of if your one goal is to in some way uh, prevent a, uh, a deepening or a continuing uh, stagnation of the uh, recession or the anemic recovery, let's say. Right. Uh, oh, wait, there's more. Oh, wait, there's more. But not only would this be the, about $300 billion, there, there are some stimulus uh, ideas here. You would extend unemployment insurance. Uh, and there's some vague notion of increased infrastructure spending under this deal, but it, it's about one tenth of the overall spending cuts that are envisioned in the deal. If that, I mean, the, the numbers are kind of indeterminate here. But uh, the biggest thing, uh, one of the biggest things, in addition to that, is that we get to rerun this in two years because the debt limit under this uh, proposed plan would only be increased for the next two years under the deal, which uh, means that come 2014, the Boehner rule, which is that you don't increase the debt limit without one uh, uh, subsequent decrease in spending or, or in, uh, entitlement reforms or social insurance reforms, uh, that would still be in place. And in 2014... You would have to raise the debt limit again, and if John Boehner has anything to say about it, and if Mitch McConnell has anything to say about it, and by the way, in 2014, I don't think that the theory is that Democrats will suddenly get 60 votes in the Senate, or that they will, uh, and even taking back the House, getting the 17 seats necessary, is a bit of a long shot, although a lot of things can happen in two years. Uh, if Republicans are still in a position to take the debt limit hostage. They will, and they have the ability to, under this deal in two years. And I would argue that uh, not only even if all things are equal as of today, uh, will Democrats not be in a better position, but the moment that uh, that deal is sealed, you've got a lot of Republican operatives going around saying, Democrats, the guys who cut your Social Security. Uh, which exactly. I think is going to cost anywhere from 10 to 20 seats in the House, I think, at a minimum, uh, because they were so effective doing this last time in 2010 in terms of Medicare. So, uh, I, I mean, the whole time in this debate, Republicans have been daring Democrats to put the cuts, particularly the social insurance programs, on the table themselves. They said, uh, you, you come up with the tax increases and you come up with the benefit cuts. Uh, Democrats uh, essentially were in the position of negotiating with themselves. Right. And uh, here the president did it, and now uh, as they ran the same game in 2010 when they said, look what Democrats did to cut your Medicare, uh, they can run around and say, look what Democrats did, even if they voted for it too. Uh, of course. They look what Democrats did to uh, cut your Social Security. Of course, because this was put on the table by the president first. I mean, that, that's the thing, you know, that's... the And even, look... The the, Demo the Republicans have shown that they have no compunction about uh, making that argument. They've done it before. So uh, there's no reason to think it would be irrational to think that they won't do it again. It would it would be it would be highly irrational to believe that. So, OK, with that said, now we have uh, Dick Durbin apparently came out today, said no. So no cut in Social Security benefits. That's just been reported uh, by Greg Sargent oh. over at the, the plumb line. Um, All right. We have Boehner uh, saying, we're going to go to our plan B, I guess, which is right. uh, plan Boehner, where uh, oh. the, uh, I don't know if he named it after himself, uh, <laughs> the, uh, where we've heard now uh, Pelosi saying, plan B won't fly. Do you think there is going to actually be a deal here? Because I, I was just shocked last night at about whatever, whatever time it was, that all this sort of was, uh, it was around, I don't know, 7 p.m., Ezra Klein comes out with his story, or 6 p.m. or 5 p.m., and then everybody yeah. seems to have had it. And by, by 11 p.m., people are, t are reporting on this as if it's already uh, been signed. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was right. just stunning right. the well, way this was. usually the case in our 24-hour media cycle that uh, everyone immediately jumps in to assess the deal. 
Um, but, you know, I mean, we saw this with the Medicare eligibility yep. age. These things are, are floated for a reason. Uh, they need to gauge the public responses, the response of their respective bases. Uh, and so it's important to uh, uh, participate in that discussion. Definitely. Uh, as, I, as I think you've, you've alluded to on, on a number of occasions. So uh, maybe this is getting a, a, a worse response. Uh, than we think if people are edging away with it from it uh, within the first 24 hours of its report. And that, and this is when it's so key, too, because you want to stop its momentum. This trial balloon right. gets up there. It's always, you know, look, uh, you want to knock down a trial balloon. It's much easier to do it when it's at five feet than uh, when it's at 50 feet. Right. I just but made I, up that but I, also too. Should, I also should say that you, know, you had people like Paul Krugman coming out and saying they were marginally positive on this idea that it was better than than raising the eligibility age for Medicare. Uh, you have the center. But now, now he said that priority. last night at eleven. This morning he started moving the other direction. He uh, did. He is... did. But but it was out there. Yep. Uh, you have the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, which has long uh, argued in favor of a uh, change CPI for Social Security, changing the inflation index, as long as it did something to protect the poor somehow in that, poor seniors uh, within that. I don't know how you would do that and still save money since uh, the latest poverty statistics show that 15.1% of seniors live in poverty. This is, this is an argument for raising uh, Social Security benefits, not for cutting them. Yeah, and when we're uh, talking about these cuts to Social Security benefits, we also got to tell people we're talking about what is like a hundred billion dollars over the course of ten years? This is this is piddling stuff. This is unless yeah, not, unless you're I mean, living. There are two things. There are two things to say here. One, it would not close the long-term funding gap. It not even close. Barely close barely a third of it. And uh, in in other words, you would be saying, "Let's do this cut," and then we're still going to have to have that conversation around Social Security sometime in the future. When uh, you everyone will argue for a balanced solution, but it won't be a balanced solution because we'll all have already done this guy. Right, definitely. Uh, so that's number one. Number two uh, is the the more obvious thing that Social Security uh, does not contribute to the deficit whatsoever and never has in seventy five years. Why is it part of a deficit discussion uh, if uh, it is it is not something that it is something that's, that's funded out of dedicated revenue that has nothing to do with the budget. Uh, it, you know, the change CPI also would be used on other things that involve the cost of living adjustment, apparently. Uh, that includes food stamps, that includes veterans' benefits, that includes uh, pensions and, and even salaries, perhaps, for some government workers who uh, get their, their, their annual raise based on cost of living adjustment. Uh, so th- this could have factors. It also could affect tax brackets. Uh, if those go up based on a chain CPI, so those would go up more slowly, and if wages rose faster than that measure of inflation, uh, what you end up having is a regressive tax That's increase right. uh, it, as a result. It would actually so, add, on average, about $100 uh, to, people's tax, um, to people's taxes, but it will particularly hit that's on average now, yeah. but it will particularly That's hit awesome. those people who I think make between thirty and fifty thousand dollars a year. Uh, exactly, which it's is a regressive just... tax increase. So, and Republicans, by the way, are resisting that part of it. They, they don't mind the benefit cuts, but right. they, they're trying to hold off the regressive tax increase. Um, but so we don't know exactly everything that chain CPI would would apply to, but we know that applying it to Social Security as a budget answer is ridiculous because Social Security doesn't affect the budget. And, and, and we're talking about, depending on how you measure it, uh, Doug Henwood had a piece up that's saying it uh, amounts to a 10% cut in benefits. Um, so depends our, on how long you live, because it, it compounds over time. That's but right. In, a fir- in the first 10 years, it's close to 5%, between 35 and 5%. And if you keep living longer, uh, the, the effect goes gets great. Yeah, so the best way to beat that um, reduction in uh, benefits is to die young. Uh, so right. that's that's a uh, strategy that I think uh, some you know uh, financial advisors are basically going to be telling their clients. Uh, what As you really need to do is yeah. just live a begin. very full life, but don't don't go so long. Uh, With a full but quick, relatively speaking. Life. Yes.